hi, good morning, seventh grade. How are you today? <clears throat> uh, I'm a little bit froggy. I've got some cold going on here, but I'll be all right. I'm here to record with you your grammar videos. I don't think we're going to make it all the way through this packet by the end of the year, but we are going to do the best we can. This is a chapter on modifiers, um, adjectives and adverbs particularly. So we're going to go over this adjective page that you did last week, and then I'm going to give you your assignment for today, which is also on adjectives. All right, so first we're going to look at pages 235 and 236 of your packet, okay? So I'm going to go over with you the answers. I'm pretty sure I went over the first page with you. Um, we talked about determining what adjectives are modifying what words and how to diagram them. So, or maybe I didn't, maybe I just gave you guys videos. I can't, I can't remember. Huh, I'm losing my mind. All right, so now I think I just gave you some videos on comparative and superlative, which is where you go large is is and larger is comparative and largest is superlative um whenever i talk about this i always say good better best because those superlatives and so i say my favorite little poem which is good better best never let it rest until your good is better and your better is best ha -ha. all right that's a never give up song poem uh, they talk, okay, so you have adjectives that are going to modify nouns. When when an adjective modifies a noun, when you're diagramming, it goes on a slanting line below that noun. Predicate adjectives go on the sentence line and they get like a slanty line right before them. So that's what we're talking about. If it modifies the indirect object or the direct object, again, it goes below the noun that it modifies. They always go below the noun they modify when you're diagramming. And so what do we mean by modify is simply what does it give more information about? What word is it describing? So for 235, underline the adjectives in each sentence and draw an arrow. So number one, fascinating is our adjective and it is modifying insects. Number two, hard is our adjective and it is modifying shells. Now underlining the correct form, this is your comparative superlatives. Queen ants are larger. You're going with larger on that one. Number four, ladybugs are more colorful. And basically, you choose whether you're going to put an ending or use more and most based on how many syllables a word used. Generally, the shorter words get the ending. A longer word will get a more or a most. <coughs> oh, excuse me. So then number five, they want you to label the sentence pattern and then diagram it. Now, this sentence pattern was a little bit tricky because it had an indirect object and a direct object. Now, just to refresh your memory, the subject is the main noun in the sentence. It's what's doing the action, what the sentence is about. Your verb, of course, is the action. In this case, it's bought. Dad bought gold jewelry. So dad is the subject. He's doing the buying. Bought is the verb. Mom and gold jewelry. So what did dad buy? What answers the question what? That's jewelry. Dad bought jewelry. So that is your direct object. Direct object answers the question what after the verb bought what? Bought jewelry. Then mom becomes your indirect object because dad bought jewelry to whom or for whom? You answer the question to whom or for whom and the answer is your indirect object. So dad bought jewelry for whom? For mom. Mom is indirect object. So when you diagram that, you're going to have dad in the subject. You're going to have your perpendicular line that goes all the way down across the sentence line. Bought then you're going to have your small perpendicular line and jewelry. Mom goes below bought because it's the indirect object. And then gold goes below jewelry. So I'm going to show you what mine looks like. Can you see it? So fix yours. Make it look like this. Okay. Now let's look at the next page. So now we're on page 236. Now in all honesty... Since we're not together, not quite as concerned about the diagramming because we can't do it on the board. I don't have the fancy technology here to do even a screen capture and show you myself diagramming. And diagramming takes practice for some people. For some people, it's easy. Like, oh, I get this. This is simple. It's just like plugging things in a puzzle or in a formula. 
but um, for other people, it's challenging. So if you're struggling with the diagramming, don't beat yourself up over it. There's not going to be a big test. When I see you again next year, we'll start from scratch with the diagramming. We'll start all over again. Learning it. Okay. So don't, don't panic. It's going to be okay. The main thing I really want you to do, and the reason why I'm giving you these diagramming problems is because I want you to be able to pick out the parts of the sentence. You need to be able to find the subject, find the verb, find the indirect object, direct object, predicate adjective, predicate nouns, okay? That's why we're doing this, okay? It's just to practice finding the parts of the sentence. So if you messed up the diagrams, just fix it. That's all, don't worry about it, okay? Don't stress. All right, so let's look at page 236. First few questions, we're underlining the adjectives and pointing out what it modifies. So in number one, six is our adjective modifying legs. In number two, bright modifies colors. In number three, cold-blooded modifies insects. In number four, useful is modifying insects. In number five, colorful is modifying dye. So now we're looking at the correct form of the adjective. So number six would be the longest insect. Number seven is the tiniest insect. And number eight is the most beautiful insect, okay? So now number nine, 10, and 11, nine and 10 have direct objects. 11 has a linking verb, which gives us a predicate adjective, okay? So whenever you have linkers, you're looking at a predicate noun or a predicate adjective. But if you have action verbs, oftentimes you will have a direct object or sometimes even an indirect object. So let's look at number nine. Jake raises many bees. Jake is the subject. He raises is the verb. Raises what? Raises bees. Bees is the direct object. And many is an adjective modifying bees. So I'm going to show you the diagrams here in a few minutes, okay? Number 10, he is the subject, showed is the verb, showed what? Showed hives. Hives is the direct object. Showed hives to whom? To me. So me is the indirect object. That leaves us with large, which is modifying hives. It's an adjective. Now 11, bees are interesting. Bees is the subject. Are is a linking verb. Interesting is an adjective, so it's a predicate adjective. So when you diagram them, Okay, this is what they look like. So go ahead and fix yours if you messed them up. Pay attention to making sure that your lines are precise. The direct object gets a short line. The predicate adjective gets a slanty line. Okay, you can pause the video if you need to. Um, just showing you my answer key because I can't write this on the board. Okay, and you need to do the apply and write. Now I'm getting lots of people turning in papers, grammar papers from this class and other classes. That they're not doing the applies and write. And you have to do the apply and write. We always did the apply and write. I hardly ever, never let you guys skip the apply and write. That's part of the assignment. You're going to lose points if you don't do the apply and write. Um, in this case, you're rewriting a caterpillar crawled across the leaf. So we're adding something. The fuzzy caterpillar crawled across the green shiny leaf, something like that. Just add some adjectives. It's easy peasy. Okay. All right. Now we're looking at page 237. We're continuing with adjectives. Okay. So on page 237, no, yep, it is 237. We're talking about specifically articles and proper adjectives. Okay. Also demonstrative adjectives. Now, articles are your words such as a, an, and the. And we usually consider them their own special part of speech. But really, in most cases, they function as an adjective. So that's what this section is about. The articles a, an, and the are special adjectives. You use a with singular nouns that begin with a consonant. You're going to use an with nouns that begin with a vowel, and you use the with singular and plural nouns when you're referring to something specific. So we have something general, an, an insect, a butterfly, a beetle. 
Something specific would be the insect, the butterfly, and the beetle. So it kind of lets you know if it's something specific or general or not, whether people use a or the. Spanish has something like this too. You guys probably learned about the, the las and the l and those sort of things in Spanish. So on the diagram, the ad, the adjective, including articles, goes below the noun that it modifies. So they show you um, the cocoon contains a Spanish moth. The fact that A and Spanish both go below moth, that goes below cocoon because that's what they modify. Now proper adjectives formed from a proper noun need to be capitalized. So the example they have here is the Bush administration or a Hawaiian island. When you talk about the American constitution, um, things like that, if it was Mrs. Masson's book, you would capitalize my name. So that's just what that is. You just need to make sure you capitalize them. A demonstrative may function as an adjective pointing out a specific place or ideas, and it answers the question which one. So these are the words such as this, that goes these um those are demonstrative adjectives and if they're used as an adjective okay sometimes they're used as a pronoun especially this you know if it's like when you say this is my book this is the subject it's a pronoun if i say i'm going to give you this book this is a modifier it's telling you which book so let's look at the examples the guide of practice has you underlining all adjectives in the sentence and circling the demonstrative ones. So number one, this beetle is a shiny green scarab. We have four adjectives. We have this, a, shiny, and green. And then we're gonna circle this because it's the demonstrative. Number two, some people call it a living African jewel. We have four adjectives again, some, a, living and African. And none of those are demonstrative, so we're just going to leave that be. They're just underlined. Number two, these beetles make a whirring noise. These, a, and whirring are all adjectives, and these is demonstrative. Now we're using the three lines underneath the letter to modify things that need to be capitalized. So number four, some South American butterflies are nine inches long. Well, South American is a proper noun. It's a place. So that needs to be capitalized. So you should put your three lines underneath South and uh, this S of South and the A of American. Number six, one New Guinean butterfly is 12 inches long. New Guinea is a place. So New Guinean is a proper adjective. So you need to capitalize the N in New and the G in Guinean. Now they want us to label the sentence pattern and diagram the sentence. So number six, those are beautiful. Those is the subject in this case. Now those, can it be a demonstrative adjective? Sometimes, but in this case it's not. It's functioning as the subject. R is a linking verb and beautiful is a noun. So it's our predicate noun being linked to those. So I'll show you how to diagram that one. Remember, between those and R, you have the perpendicular line that goes through the sentence line. And then between R and beautiful, you have the slanty line. Okay? So that's what we're doing. So now on page 238, you're just doing more of that same thing. If you struggle with the diagramming, that's okay. I really want you to focus more on the labeling. Okay? But some of you are going to get the diagramming. And that's great. And then don't forget to use the apply and write. You have to write two sentences about bugs, an insect of some sort, and circle all your adjectives. So make sure you use adjectives so you have something to circle. All right, so that's your lesson today. I'll see you again soon. Bye.